guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Daniel Rosal here, and um, we're going to be doing today tackling something a little bit complicated, but I really wanted to make this video for a while because it's gonna be pulling together, I think, two really important uh, things for anyone who is trying to record better audio into OBS on Ubuntu Linux. Um, bear with the noise, unfortunately, there is drilling going on in the background. It's kind of ironic because uh, if there's any, any, any video I needed to use a bit of noise suppression for, it would be this one, but it's gonna be way too complicated to show you the uh, all these controls and also do them in real time as I'm recording. So uh, sorry for the drilling and also another good reason I have these studio headphones on. So um, what I want to do in today's video, I want to do two things. Um, I've just uploaded a video to YouTube in which I talk about Pulse Effects. Pulse Effects is a super useful GUI. It allows you to do equalization. You'll, you'll see a full frequency graph of your input stream and uh, you'll get a lot of controls. You'll get reverb, denoising, stereo tools, a bunch, way more stuff than probably most people would need. But if you simply want to play around with different equalization presets, really, really useful. So um, even if you're just kind of a casual OBS user like me, it might be worth just checking out some of those to see if they can make your microphone sound better. Now, here's the connection to monitoring, why? because I've done a video about monitoring, I've done a video about pulse effects, and here's why I want to do a video about monitoring and pulse effects, because when you're changing stuff, settings in your microphone, um, there's two approaches. One, you can change stuff, record and listen. Hey, did that sound good? It's a very inefficient way to go about it. So that's why monitoring is useful, listening to yourself as you record. Um, so if you're gonna be doing pulse effects changes, you probably wanna be monitoring as well. So it's gonna get a little bit uh, tricky for me to, to keep this straight, but let's let's jump into my screen here. Okay, um, now I've mentioned this in kind of every video, but I like to, I'm gonna do it again here. It's really important to think about the kind of, what I call the cadence of uh, your, of the of the audio controls when you're recording an OBS. You have your um, Pulse, uh, sorry, your Pulse Audio GUI, it's launched by, the, by Pavu Control. That's this window here, and this is like the master of the audio um, in, in this kind of a sequence at least. I don't do stuff with jack or more complicated audio stuff, but just using the basics in Ubuntu, this is kind of the master. Then you have, um, in this config at least, then you've got pulse effects sitting between, between that as an intermediary in equalizer, and then that passes down to the application layer. That's why I've dragged across my OBS Studio Mixer so that you can see that um, this is I have my this is a my, this is a lav mic that you're listening to up the top here the Maono of analog stereo. I've applied a minus five dB. It's eighty one percent, and I can see in pulse audio the levels I'm getting recording this at are looking fairly okay. They're not clipping. Uh, we're peaking here at about minus do 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 minus fourteen or thereabouts dB. So, um, how do you monitor? So. By default in Ubuntu, um, in uh, Pavu Control, there's no button that says, please monitor this audio stream. That would be super useful uh, if, there was, if that was built into the GUI. I guess it's not because monitoring is kind of an obscure use case for most everyday users. And if every time you plugged in a microphone by default at monitor, that would drive most people crazy because you'd hear yourself. So um, the, the, the way I know to do it is by using this command. And I'm gonna just, it's the, it's this one here. So just to talk through this command for a second, P-A-C-T-L load module, okay, with the hyphen, and then it's module loopback, and then to turn off the uh, monitoring loop, and that's what it is, it's a loop. Here's my microphone. It's gonna be recording, and we're also gonna be creating an output stream that's gonna loop into my headphone. So it's creating a sort of circle. Um, so module loopback, and then it's module unload, sorry. It's unload module, module loopback, and that will stop the monitoring. So I'm gonna turn on the module and now it's gonna get kind of distracting. So I'm gonna actually take these off because I can hear myself and it's super hard to concentrate as you hear yourself with a bit of latency. Um, so now I can hear my microphone now. There's actually two microphones uh, recording here as you can see. One of them is a built-in microphone of the webcam. The other one is the, the, the microphone I want to monitor which is the Maono. So how do you um, specify which microphone you want to use for the loopback so there's probably a smarter way to do it and if you know that please uh, leave a comment uh, for the for the more intelligent way the kind of hacky workaround i figured out is to set the microphone you want to monitor as the fallback um, and that'll that'll give it primacy 
when it comes to uh, monitoring. So I have my Maono set as fallback by ticking on this green um, icon here and that, that's what it's uh, looping into these headphones here. Yep, still going. Um, okay, so we are now monitoring. So this is kind of the first stage of the process done. Now let's go into the, um, the pulse effects. Okay, so now I've got my pulse effects and what you can see here, this is pretty, this is actually kind of where, almost, honestly, we could just end the video here because um, this is, uh, you're basically applying the, uh, the pulse effects into your loopback channel. Now I'm on the output side of pulse effects. I'm just gonna drag it down so you can see it. There is an input side as well. So um, if I was recording, if I was using this with OBS, I've said before, I get two OBS channels and pulse effects. I'm not sure why. I'd be applying the first one. Um, and in order to monitor what was going on there, um, there is a few options here. So firstly, you've got two approaches that you could use. The first is as follows. If you want to apply changes to your microphone, you can do it here, set up your settings and then apply them again on the input side of Pulse Effect. So let me just pop on these microphone, these headphones and I'm putting on, let's say, bass enhancer. And now I've got some bass enhancement going on, changing a few settings. Uh, let's say reverberation, delay time, delay time. So this is one way of going about it. You can uh, play around with the loopback channel directly. Another way that you can do it here is, and then apply those same effects over on the input side of pulse effects. There is one more way you can do it. It's gonna get a slight bit more, uh, slight, slightly complicated now. If you look at your pulse effects, your playback stream, you can put this into the loopback channel and listen to it there. So you can actually be directly, uh, let me just explain this one a little bit more, a little bit more carefully. You can be directly applying to your, uh, your settings on the microphone into OBS. And you can be, if you look now at our input devices, uh, we're going to be having OBS in my recording here, and you can direct that to the your headphones.